Vactors TrueVac HXX. HXX Vacuum System Care. This video is for general information. The operator manual should be read for more detail on proper care of your TrueVax HXX. Vacuum System Overview All HXX units have a vacuum system powered either by a positive displacement blower PD, or a fan. They differ in their applications and capabilities. Trucks equipped with a PD system can lift sludge or a column of water, while fan systems cannot. Fan systems can move much more air than a PD system. So they move material faster, but they cannot lift as much. Filtration is more important on a PD unit. If a blower gets plugged, it can stall. If a fan gets plugged, it will continue to spin. Vacuum Systems The term vacuum system as it pertains to hydroexcavation product is actually a misnomer. Air picks up material and carries it into the debris body. Air must be moving in order to move material. If the nozzle is submerged, no air can get in and material cannot reach the debris body. Air movement is even more important on PD units because the air cools the blower. PD Models The positive displacement rotary lobe type blower is powered by the truck's diesel engine and is coupled to the truck power transmission by means of a transfer case. The transfer case is positioned between the transmission and the rear axle. When engaged, the transfer case diverts power away from the road wheels to drive a blower. Fan Models The fan is powered hydraulically. All Models The blowers or fans suck air out of the tank, creating an area of low pressure in the tank. Air from the outside of the tank rushes into the tank through the attached hoses. Any loose material in the path of the rushing air is conveyed by the high-speed air stream to the debris body via the hose. When materials enter the debris body, the transition from the hose to the large debris tank causes the air speed to drop considerably. The incoming air strikes a specially designed deflector plate that directs the material flow downward. The now slower airflow cannot sustain the debris in the air and the material falls out into the tank. This is the first of three stages for filtration. Any lighter powdery material still suspended in the air flow is conveyed to the cyclone chamber, the second filtration stage. Due to the forced centrifugal action of the flow, most of the dust particles separate and collect in the dead airspace of the cleanout. By this stage of filtration, about 96% of the material has dropped out of the air flow. Exiting the cyclone, nearly dust free, air passes through the final stage of filtration. It enters the final filter. After leaving the micro strainer, the airflow passes through the blower and the silencer before being exhausted into the atmosphere. Optimizing speed. Running the system at higher speeds than necessary is not only uneconomical in terms of excessive fuel consumption, accelerated wear, wear on the engine, transmission, and the blower, but will also prevent the filtration system from working properly. Minimum working speed will reduce wear. Filtration System The filtration system is designed to clean the air coming into the system by removing all dirt, dust, and foreign material from the air. The filtration system's primary purpose is to protect the blower by removing all materials from the air stream before it reaches the blower. On PD units, the air passes out through the silencer. 
span units do not have pre-filter, strainer, or silencer. The vacuum filtration system requires cleaning for optimal operation. The cyclones need to be cleaned when a job is completed. The unit will be driven and parked between jobs or there will be more than a shift of downtime. Some special conditions require more frequent cleaning, such as high humidity combined with certain materials. Cleaning the Cyclone Access to the interior of the cyclone for cleaning purposes can be gained through the top and the bottom. From the top of the cyclone, material and debris can be washed down to the bottom cleanout. At the bottom of the cyclone housing, the access door can be opened and the material that has collected can be completely removed. After each operation, clean and wipe down the door gasket and the mating surface. When swinging the bottom access door open, it's advisable to stand off to the side. When the door is open, excessive material may be released. Final Filter Cleaning the air filter and the strainer and remove foreign material. Open the door covering the housing. Release the latches that hold the door closed. Inside, the filter is positioned in the center of the strainer housing. Remove the wing nut and remove the filters. Inspect the filters and remove any foreign material or substance and clean if necessary. The outer foam element can be removed for cleaning. The elements may be washed in warm soapy water, vacuumed, or gently blown out or replaced. The filter should be dry before reinstalling. During initial startup of normal operation with a new filter, note the vacuum level with the air operated vacuum relief open. The filter should be cleaned or replaced when the vacuum level increases about one inch of mercury above the initial cleaned filter level with the air operated vacuum relief open. With the filter removed, inspect the interior of the strainer housing and remove any foreign material or substance with a shop vac and clean if necessary. While the filter is removed, drain any moisture from the strainer housing by opening both drains located at the bottom of the strainer. After the moisture has completely drained from the housing, close the drains and place the filter back in the housing in the same manner as it was removed. Apply some anti-seize to the wing nut threads for easier removal. PD Blower Sound System A drain plug is provided at the bottom of the silencer housing which is used to drain any excessive moisture that has collected in the silencer during operation. It must be plugged during normal operation. The plug must be removed at the end of each day and the water drained out. Leave the drain plugs out when not in use. This prevents rainwater from building up inside the silencer. Verify that the rain cap works correctly to assure rain and water cannot enter. Vacuum Relief Valves Vacuum relief valves are installed on vacuum trucks that use positive displacement vacuum pumps. The blowers require free air for startup to prevent overloading the drive engine and for shutdown to prevent reversal damage to the blower and drive engine. Hand operated and operator triggered valves are the two styles typically used. Lower vacuum units are also equipped with a spring-loaded automatic relief valve to protect the blower by limiting the vacuum level. Vacuum Enable Disable Application on PD Blower Vacuum Trucks Vacuum Release are normally labeled Enable or Disable. Operators of a PD vacuum trucks are typically working close to the end of the hose and can become entrapped. Vacuum relief valves are not meant to be a substitute for the safety T during most vacuum operations.
In most situations, a safety T is required and the operator and or their observer would release the safety T to relieve the system vacuum in an emergency. In applications where the hose is supported vertically from a boom and the operator does not have to manually manipulate the hose, a safety T is not practical nor necessary. High vacuum PD trucks are typically equipped with a hand operated vacuum relief valve so that the valve can be throttled to control the amount of fresh air allowed into the system. This feature is usually used to control the air temperature while vacuuming hot materials to prevent the overheating of the vacuum pump. Most PD blower trucks are equipped with an operator triggered vacuum relief. This is usually a large valve located near the vacuum pump inlet. All units require that this valve be open during startup to prevent the drive engine from stalling. It is also open before shutdown so the system vacuum does not attempt to reverse the air flow through the vacuum pump. Reverse flow can damage the vacuum pump, drive engine, and drive lines. They are also used to quickly relieve system vacuum to correct hose blockage or other emergency situations. Freezing weather. Anytime a blower unit will sit after use during freezing weather, the blower should be run three to five minutes with the vacuum relief open to dry out the blower. This will reduce the risk of the blower freezing up. Depending on weather conditions, it may even be necessary before the operators go to lunch and at the end of the day operation. Selecting Hoses To help prevent or reduce clogging, use large diameter hose, 6 inch or larger, smooth bore hose as straight in line as possible. For maximum output, the system is designed to use 6 inch diameter hose. Hose sizes smaller than that will cause additional friction loss. A higher percentage of the available engine and blower power will be used up in overcoming these inefficiencies. This will result in a dramatic increase in time required to complete a job. If it is necessary to use smaller hose diameters, use multiple connections. Their combined area should equal that of a 6 inch hose. To reduce friction losses, use metallic smooth bore pipe as much as possible and flex hose for bends and curves. When bends in the hose run must be made, they should be wide and gradual. Using inexpensive, lightweight hose lengths for the last few working feet at the operator's end will provide greater maneuverability and less operator fatigue. Oil Level There are normally three sight glasses on the blower. Locations will vary with the blower model and manufacturer. The unit should be on level ground and off. The oil should be filled to the center of the sight glasses. Do not overfill. PD Blower Oil Change Blower oil should be drained and replaced every 500 hours or whenever it becomes contaminated by water, chemicals, and any material which could cause congealing or be abrasive. Oil changes at more frequent intervals may be necessary if oil conditions become poor. Remove debris from the oil fill plugs and sight glasses of the blower. Oil draining. In the event of temperatures below 68 degrees Fahrenheit, let the machine run for several minutes in order to heat up the oil to make it more fluid. Remove the upper fill plug, one each end. Remove the drain plug at the end and let the oil flow out completely. Install and tighten the draining plug. Replace sealant on fill plugs. Use Loctite PST56747 or an equivalent. Oil filling. 
Remove the upper fill plugs, one on each end. Fill the tank to a maximum level in the sight glass. Install and tighten the fill plugs. Start the unit and run the blower about 1000 RPMs for 10 minutes. Stop blower and let the blower level stabilize for about 30 minutes. Check that the oil level at each sight glass is correct. Add oil as required to bring it to the center of the sight glasses on the rear gauge. The front gauge should be in the middle of the upper half of the sight gauge window. Note do not overfill the blower. Overfilling usually results in oil breakdown due to excessive heat and aeration from churning action of the gears. Early breakdown of the oil will result in heavy varnish and sludge deposits that plug up oil ports and build up on the splines and bearings. Verification and regular maintenance. If the oil sight glasses are dirty and made verification difficult, completely clean the case and or replace the gauges. PD blower storage. Beyond a few days, there is a risk the close fitting surfaces inside the blower will rust and increase the blower lobe wear on startup or lock up due to rusting the lobes to the housing. Short term and high humidity conditions allow the blower to run three to five minutes with the vacuum relief open to dry out the system. Refer to the blower's manufacturer's manual for details on long term storage. Then with the blower at idle speed and the vacuum relief open, spray up to 8 ounces of liquid wrench, non-flammable, penetrant, and lubricant L312 or L412 or an equivalent rust preventative in the vacuum relief or in the vacuum gauge port. Leave the drain plugs out of the micro strainer housing when not in use. This prevents rainwater from building up in the micro strainer housing. 